o'clock. Hey guys, how are ya? I'm gonna wait for everyone to start coming in. We just had a 6.8 at the Central Mid-Atlantic Ridge. There we go. Hey guys, how are you? Let's see if I can get more of this board in here. There we go. Wait for everyone else to come in here. And we got a... Central Mid-Atlantic Ridge is 6.8, and nothing else, no other alerts to come along with that. We'll give it a couple more minutes for you guys to come in. Let's check out USGS. Three point eight in Mentone, Texas. What is that? Three eight. Come on in, guys. We're uh, gonna get starting soon. Yeah, the six point eight that was between Brazil and Senegal, give or take. All right. Back to refresh, get that going over here. Yeah, we're talking skills tonight. And we took down a bunch of notes. And hopefully you guys can compare and see what you guys want to add to that list tonight. I hope you guys can read that. Communications and the medical are going to be good, big topics, because those are pretty diverse. Got, let's see. Medical's at different levels. Everything from basic to your advanced and specialties. And then comms, uh, communications. That covers ham radio, cell phones, hey Linda, how are you? Yeah, I'm working on the setup. This was um, a little impromptu. I'm still working on the room. Where are you from, Linda? Yeah, the skills tonight we're going to be talking about. Last week was getting ready for home and your car for winter. And tonight we're going to be focusing on skills. Yeah, piece by piece we're putting the room together. I'm just happy to finally get streaming through from YouTube. That took a while. 
So no more Streamlabs. We're actually using their software, Michigan. Okay. Is it cooler than usual? Did you notice that this year? I'm over here in uh, Western Connecticut, and we noticed the tree is starting to change like the first week of August. And tonight, it's actually, it's been cool today. I think it didn't hit past maybe 73 where we are. You wait for everyone else to come in. But yeah, our big focus point is going to be skills. And on top of skills, supplies with those skills. You got, on top of that, old tools. We're talking the hand crank, non-electrical. Hey, Jeff, how are you? Cool here in Iowa. Yep. Cold all day. Yeah, this, uh, my daughter was thinking about starting a fire and I actually paused and I thought about, I'm like, maybe, maybe starting the uh, pellet stove tonight. And we can get some more pellets. We, we didn't get that. Uh, we didn't get them yet. <laughs> Normally we don't get them until late September, maybe early October is when we start turning on the stove. But we had snow here middle of April was a flurry. And then it snowed again May 9th when we were doing work on the car. I remember freezing outside. I'm like, I got to go inside. And <laughs> we kept popping out in and out. Trying to see how things are going. Yeah, piece by piece, we're getting this room together, but soundboard's working, software's working on YouTube. That's a miracle. Um, oh, good. Yeah, it's chilly everywhere. And I don't know if you guys got that alert from windy.com. There was that second storm. I believe they're calling it beta right now because I think we ran through. We're going through the alphabet. Or it hasn't been formally named, but that one, if you're looking at Mexico... All on the coast is just right along the coast, and it's going to basically hug all along the coast, all the way to Florida, and then move out. It's going to take about a week from what some of the projections look like. Yeah, do you have any ideas about skills? If you want to add anything to the list? 43 tonight, yeah. Holy cow. How's your garden? Are you, is your garden all done? We had our chickens out today. We had let them run around. We pushed the coop inside the potato patch area. And you can actually watch them right now live on DLive underneath the same name, Talk with Tiffany. We had all four of them running around today. 43. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be, I think low 50s, maybe upper 40s tonight. I got to check. But yeah, it was chilly today. I think it's great to make those steps of progress in doing a show. Yeah, this was, um, I was doing fine before, and this is probably my second time on camera, only because we, we did talk about this before with other people, and a lot of that was because I never wanted this to be about me or focus on me. I wanted it all about the fun, uh, foundation of being prepared and being informed about what's going on out there. And someone made a good point about that level of trust. So I finally broke down and came back into the podcast room. I'm making modifications. I just need lighting at this point, but soundboard's working, software's working. That was a big one with the uh, YouTube. But yeah, we're getting this put back together. Still have watermelon, peppers, tomatoes, cantaloupe, squash. Nice. I think we just have pumpkins left in our garden and maybe some leftover corn and little tomatoes. But yeah, everything else um, is ready for chop and drop at this point and then just cover everything with hay. Because we're going to need the insulation in the coming years just to make anything survive. I love the Ruth Stout method. I don't know what you guys are using. Some people till... I, I fell in love with the Ruth Stout method. It's great for water retention when you have those dry spells, which we've had really bad this year. Um, it's great for not total weed prevention, but it does help with weeds. Uh, moisture retention when you have those dry spells. Hey, E, want to open up the window? Maybe that'll help. 
Yeah, big ones for uh, for skills are, I believe, are going to be medical and communications on top of everything else. Because again, with medical alone, you have your basic skills, you have your advanced and then specialties from dentists to nurses specializing in what they're uh, trained in, respiratory and whatnot. Yeah, just open the curtains. Let's see if that'll help. Yeah, maybe. And then ham radio, that's a big one. Uh, we got our licenses years ago. And in fact, my husband went for his extra to help out with testing to get people trained. So we got ham radio cert. Someone mentioned cert last time. I think that was eyes to see. That's working with your local communities in your EOCs. Yeah, I got some emails coming through. Yeah, if you email me any ideas, I'll get them the next show. Yeah, I do appreciate that. There are some good ideas coming through. But yeah, with CERT, that's basically if there's a, a local emergency or something going on, you can work together with your local town management. See, I found that using straw instead of hay is best. Yes, uh, very few weeds and straw. True. But the Rusat method is good. Yeah, um, I have found there are bales of hay that they actually apply heat to. So you can actually help kill off some of the uh, the grass seeds in there. Yeah, it's great if you have any physical ailments or if your back hurts or if you don't like bending over for long periods of time, if you're older or arthritic. You can throw down that hay or straw and put the seeds in there. Again, there's so many benefits to it. Everyone has their own preferred method. People love tilling. There are some who just live and die by that. Um, I tried both, but this just seems great for, again, like in the summertime, if you have very few times where you have rain or you want to control the weeds, that's always a good one. And not only that, but stock up on the seeds too. Get that or get those orders in early, like January, February. So when they do start shipping, you have that ready. Because this year was horrible with the seed shortages everywhere. Locally, online, rareseeds.com. They're doing the best they could just to stay on top of all this stuff. Yeah, that's another one, seeds and gardening. That's another thing. A lot of people think that gardening, you're just literally throwing seeds in the ground, watering it and walking away. But until you know your area and how what seeds work, what methods work, all that stuff. It's so important to just get the trial and errors out now before you really do count on those crops. Yeah, get your hay from a horse farmer. Mostly just grass filled with seeds, lesson learned. Yeah, again, it's one of those until you try it and you know what works, what doesn't work. Um, know what areas are prone to flooding or pooling. That's another one. You can actually build that up. Yeah, it's get your hands dirty. Just go out there and try it. Same thing with supplies. A lot of people buy supplies and then they never use it. Or what's worse is they buy it and then they forget where they put it. You get some bins, get some labels going. And practice is no different than swapping out your bags from spring and summer to wintertime, getting your car ready. Go through your stuff. Start a fire. Try different ways to start fires. My daughter gets a kick out of it. The little rocket stove. And we actually built a little metal one for like eight bucks a couple years ago. We did a video on that. That was fun. I think we made hot chocolate and coffee. But yeah, and then that goes all parts of skills. This is all getting your hands on those supplies, getting your hands inside the dirt, getting ready and exposed to what's going to work, what's not going to work. But cert, medical training, anything that you have, problem solving, if you're great at solving puzzles. All those stuff, big and small. Medical training, your basic CPR. Knowing how to recognize when something's going on. It was only $4 a bell. Oh, neat. Harvest your seeds. Exactly. The new seeds will be acclimated to your environment. That's true. That's absolutely correct. When you start your garden, try to seed save. Like Set some plants aside. Let them just bolt and go to seed. Knowing how to cook is a good thing. Exactly. There are great channels that are 
demoing how to cook outside over a campfire or how to cook without power or even just the basics, cooking bread at home. You can do all that stuff. Um, see what it's like to feel like to make your own bread. What does that bread dough feel like? What does it look like? What does it smell like? When you, can't, when you cook things over and over and do things, you kind of can tell by smell when things are done, by feel, and to the point where you don't need timers or even sometimes measuring cups and spoons. Yeah, just trial and error. You know what? Mess up now and don't worry about it and then know what works and what to do differently next time. Um, get your dehydrators going now. Even You can buy frozen food. Get that dehydrated. That'll last a long time. Dehydrating your foods from your garden. Uh, canning your stuff. We were able to can four pints of peaches from our peach tree this year. Yes, having the proper cookbooks and recipes are great. Print that stuff out now. Don't just have it um, digitally, but it's so good to have those books now. If you have a good bookstore or a good book fair, um, even like use bookstores, get those old school recipes. I mean, there's so many detailed things in there. Like there's a channel where they talked about making bread and how there was a bread shortage and what they did to actually stretch out that wheat. And one of them that worked really best was potatoes. And you see potato bread everywhere in different stores. And what they would do was they would take two thirds of the flour and one third of that mashed potatoes. They would boil them down, mash them up, incorporate that into the bread dough. And it looked the same, smelled the same. It was very filling. Yeah, learn how to butcher an animal. There are books and videos about that. There was a good video. I'll find the link. I'll show, I'll show that uh, later in another video where the guy processed a deer in under 10 minutes with barely any blood on him. Very clean. Talked about angling the knife and how not to get into the bone, where to cut, how to make it efficient so things are falling up where you want them to fall, when you want them to fall. Uh, I've never processed a deer before. Oh, we're, we're all good shots of the family, but when it comes to hunting, uh, we have our bow hunting license, but not our rifle license in the state. Unfortunately, those wait lists suck, the, and the classes are all full, especially this year. So, again, you have the skills, but apply them. So if you know anyone who does hunt, go along with them. I want to do that this year. Potato bread is great. I love it. Yeah. Um, same thing with buckwheat with the garden for the winter cover crop. You can grow buckwheat. You can save some to grind into beautiful buckwheat flour for pancakes or breads, or you can chop it and drop it and add that nitrogen back into the soil. Again, these are things that you learn along the way as you garden. So it's not just plant in the spring and harvest in the late summer and fall. You can actually keep things going all year round. Some people keep root vegetables in the soil well into winter just for that preservation aspect of it. It's in the ground, it's preserved. And you can pull carrots or turnips, sometimes even potatoes from it if you want to. Don't need a rifle license in Iowa, only a permit for handguns. Hi, welcome to Connecticut. Um, yeah. Uh, although I will say this, there are areas where I think deer hunting is year round because of uh, vegetation and landscaping. Yep. <laughs> We're doing the best we can. We're doing the best we can. <laughs> no, literally, you do the best you can around here. But um, yeah, get your hands dirty. Keep learning. Uh, I do want to go with people who do hunt and actually process. I want to start with birds first, maybe pheasants or small game. Kind of get a feel for that. And they work your way up to deer. But that video, I will find that link. I do have that saved in a file. I... The guy made it seamless. I think it was probably five, six minutes when he was done. I was impressed. Very clean. He was very clean at the end. Yeah, you can can milk. I have a few gallons of pint jars. I never heard canning milk. Almost like condensed milk or evaporated milk. I have made ghee. I, um, I didn't, I'm not sure if I made a video about that. It was years ago. It's so easy to make your own ghee. It's clarified butter. Basically, you're skimming off where you just keeping the fat. It's kind of like what they did in the Himalayas where, or anywhere, if you don't have refrigeration, but you want that fat, you basically put it in a saucepan, you melt it down. You're not boiling it, but you're basically separating the milk fat. You skim off the top, you're skimming and skimming and skimming. And then you have that clarified butter you can put in jars 
and it'll last you a very, very, very long time, and it's it's good nutrition for you. Oh, good. <laughs> Your oldest son is good at butchering. I'm telling you, man, those families that have all those collective skills together, that is amazing. And you know what's funny? Um, I will say this. Uh, there are some talented, skillful people uh, everywhere. And unfortunately, where we are, it's almost like you got to really scratch for them and find them. And every now and then, one surprises you. And we were surprised last night after a meeting. And my husband was texting someone. And out of left field, I said, I did not see that coming with what they're, how that discussion turned into information uh, an inf informational uh, black hole. But it was one of those, some people just tend to surprise you out of nowhere. But yeah, uh, let's stick with the skills. Uh, that's another great one right there, hunting. Let's put that down. And then processing. I'm trying to think, what else? So, so far we got CERT. Ham radio, communication, medical training, slash EMT, security at home, uh, firearms training, gardening, herbs, food preserving, soap making, baking and cooking, beekeeping, falling trees, that's a skill, uh, homeschooling, and hunting and processing now. And more importantly, getting your family involved. Looks like, Jeff, you kind of got that down. <laughs> what else you got? Yeah, I like these emails. Hold on. Um, the milk looks a bit darker, and but tastes the same. The longer you pressure cook it, the more condensed it gets. Okay, yeah. You can buy books on breaking down a carcass. Okay. Um, you know what? I don't have the book up here, but there are great books for homeschooling. And one of them is The Brainy Bunch. I think we're going to put that. I've read a ton of books over the years when I was first learning about homeschooling, that was the best one. It's a quick read. It's a short book. I mean, the book's about that thick. It's a fast read. It's a little bit bigger, but uh, it's an army wife of nine kids and they travel a bunch. And I think the oldest daughter was like the youngest naval doctor. And it just goes on and on about what kids have for dreams and aspirations, backdoor ways to get into college sooner without so much testing. And it, very inspiring, very motivational, worth the read. In fact, I got our library in town to buy it for others in the future who are looking into homeschooling. If you bend down the gooseneck part of... Before, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about doing that. Hold on. Let me try that. It's cheap. I see. I need the light coming in the other way. Uh, you know, I've tried that. Hold on. Let's just see. Maybe if I just back up a little bit here. Yeah, it's kind of goofy. Oh, see, it goes on and off. You no, know, next time we'll have it in front. I think that's like the last thing, which is the lighting. But the Brainy Bunch, if anyone you know who homeschools or thinking about it, that's a great book. Fast read. We'll put all the links again. And when this is over, I'll put all this information in the description box. Learn how to fish. Yeah, she's actually got her fishing passport. We have our licenses for fresh and salt. Same as gardening. Oh, yeah. I think, uh, thanks, Linda. <laughs> yeah, fishing. That's another one. That's a great one, actually. You'd be amazed we could find fish. Ponds, lakes, rivers, coastlines. Yeah, and, and that's patience. You talk about gardening being patient. Fishing, that's another one. Starting fires, different ways to start fires. Oh, what else have we not covered? We talked about CERT, medical training. Just the basics. There's so many videos you can watch online when it just comes to basics, CPR. The basic thing you can do is just make sure someone's breathing or their heartbeat's beating. Um, at least buy that, that person time before... Uh, professionals come and help out. That's a big one. Um, security at home. That's a big one. That's a multi-layer one. You can do everything from driveway sensors, 
uh, lighting, simple lighting around the house, LED lighting, and get the lights where the lights are actually built in so you can't just unscrew them. That's a big one. Um, security cameras, there's so many options. You can go wired or wireless. We went wired. Um, again, if you have a generator, you can always put those back on. And you don't need Wi-Fi for that one. You can do Wi-Fi remote ones. You can do hardwired. We went hardwired. Uh, the ring doorbell, that's got the cameras built in. You can do prickly, thorny bushes around your property. Make it challenging so it's not just so inviting to come over. Water, how to find water. Yeah, I think that's under... Do you have it on here? Let's see. Food, gardening. You know, I will say this, the bison well pump. That's a good one. Um, the well pump we have on our well is a bison well pump. Um, I'm trying to remember. The, the price is going to vary depending on how deep your well is. And they tell you to bring down a little bit extra uh, pipe so you actually get... So even if you have uh, in the middle of a drought, you're able to get water. Absolutely. It's worth it. So if you have no power, that thing was a home run when we had no power for a week um, with uh, Tropical Storm Isaiah that came through. Water, how to find water, locating certain types of plants. Yeah, absolutely. Foraging. That's another great one, foraging. Getting water from a tree. Do you know how to get water from a tree? Um, it's almost like dripping sap. When you cut certain limbs, the water will come out. Or is that the plastic bag method where you kind of build up the condensation? How do you get water from a tree? Learn how to get water from a well with a rope and bucket. <laughs> Not as easy as it looks on TV. A lot of things don't aren't as easy as they make it look like on TV. They have editing and really good lighting. <laughs> yeah, again, trial and error. What works for your location, your terrain? Is it flat where you are? Is it hilly? Uh, we have terrain behind us, so when there's water flowing, we're good. <laughs> Again, know the lay of your land. Uh, know your strengths. Know your family strengths. Is your family even on board with all this stuff? That That's a big one. That There are two big questions with that one when it comes to family. It's, is everyone on board? And when is enough? When do you have enough water? When do you have enough preps? When do you have enough fill in the blank? No, you need a knife and two, sm oh, two small flat pieces of wood. Okay. Hold on, now I'm curious. Water from trees. I have not seen that method. I'm gonna look that up now. My to-do list just grew tonight. Drill a hole in the tree. Oh, okay, two to three inches. Almost like um, collecting sap for maple syrup. Drill a hole in the tree for about two to three inches. Okay, is it like getting sap from uh, for making maple syrup? Stick the uh, pieces of wood. Oh, that's right. And it's almost like a half a stick, right? Where it comes out. Almost like a half open pipe. Okay. All right. All right. I'm reading it. All right. I have seen that, but I've never done it. Okay. Yeah. And, and since we opened up a lot of trees a couple years ago, we've seen a bunch of maples over here that are maturing. So we can make maple syrup again in a V shape. Okay. Yes. All right. Gotcha. There's so much information out there. <laughs> oh, another skill, uh, knitting, uh, sewing, um, repairing clothes. I, I'm looking at fabric over here, sewing. There's another good one. Hello, sewing. Mending clothes, sew machine, doing things by hand, crocheting. Put a container under the sticks. Okay. Yeah, all right. That's another thing we're going to try. Yeah, again, this is why I love doing these, uh, especially these live shows now. I'm trying to not only just find information or reply to emails and then consolidate into a show, but kind of just spitball and do stuff just like this. I think sewing, crocheting. Uh, let's see, what else have we covered? All right, so we got security for home. What else do we forgot about security? Keeping trees and plants cut back from windows. Oh, three inch long screws for your door jams. Put a container in. Yep. Um, what else? Just the basics, really. 
Find an old sewing machine. <laughs> yeah, and foot pedal. <sighs> oh, boy. You know, maybe years ago it would have been much easier. Now that everyone's, everyone this year, everyone's finding old school. Like, everyone's collectively doing it all at once. Chickens. Uh, we've never had issues finding chickens before. This breed of chicken we have now, never had them before. That was the only one available. There were nine to pick from. That was the only one I could uh, place an online order for. Uh, we had Red Cross, reliable, predictable birds. This breed, they haven't laid eggs yet. And I think it's supposed to be like any day now. Uh, Red Cross chickens take about three months, give or take, to start laying eggs. We've had these birds um, since March. Yeah. They should be laying eggs any day now. But yeah, old school sewing machines with a foot pedal. It's getting hard. Uh, I'm trying to find old school tools. Like the hand crank drills to drill holes. Um, yeah, even supplies for just repairs. Like wood, nails, screws. You try ordering things online. There's almost uh, low supply, low inventory. Or prices going up a bunch. That's why it's so important. If you can stock up on supplies here and there, uh, ball jars. Uh, I couldn't find any in our feed store the other day. All they had were the little tiny half pint uh, jam jars. Uh, lids. That's another one you, you should stock up on are lids. The jars, you can replace those. They're going to outlive you if you don't break them. But the lids, stock up on lids, uh, wide mouth and regular. I have Tatler ones. Those you can reuse. I haven't tried them yet. I'll be honest, but I do have them. They claim to be reusable lids, but yeah, that falls under the food preserving. And I do have some great videos about using a brake bleeder. So if you have no power and you pop open a jar and you want to seal it again and keep it fresh, you can use a brake bleeder to pump out the air and then keep your your soup mixes, supplies, food, whatever you want to keep in there fresh and dry. Yeah, you've had a problem getting pint and quart jars. We stocked up a while ago, but just again, it's always that when is enough, you don't know. So you just kind of add a little bit here and there, but I couldn't find anything at the feed store. Someone did make up a good point. Um, I think it might have been you, Jeff, or someone else. I'm trying to remember now. But I did give him credit in the video for suggesting it. When you go to Joanne Fabric and you check out, you get those receipts for one item at 50% off. Take that and go back and buy jars for half the price. I thought that was a really good idea. Craft stores do have those. Joanne and maybe Michaels uh, would have the ball jars. So if you have a Michaels or Joanne Fabric near you, give that a shot. But it's the bloods you need most. But it's the bloods, B L U D S. Um, soap making, I've seen the videos. I'm going to be honest. It's not something I want to do. I might as well just stock up on it by lids as often as you can. Absolutely. Yeah. If you can find those at least, hopefully maybe order them online lids. Yeah, I, I got you. Uh, again, unfortunately, if you have to buy it online, find them online. If that's if you can find them. Soap making, it's a beautiful looking process. I'm not going to try that. That looks time and labor intensive. Honestly, just buy the bars and those will last you. Uh, much longer than liquid, I think. Beekeeping. If you look back early on my channel, we have um, a bear knock over. We had it recorded on our security camera. A black bear came through, knocked it over. We were actually able to save it for some crazy reason. They didn't uh, um, leave. Uh, the second time, uh, knocked it over. Made some damage third time, completely destroyed it. Um, we lost the hive, they left, and we were actually able to surprisingly piece it back together, give it to someone else to hey, listen, you guys give it a try. But bees, um, again, we, we got the electric fence around it, got everything ready, and then people said, uh, yeah, that's not going to do anything because if you think about the thick fur, so if the, the bear wants after it, it's going to get after it. So we didn't really replace it, we might next year. But I'm thinking of putting up like a three quarter like fence paneling around it, like three quarters, like a squared U. Just maybe put some fence around it. But yeah, beekeeping, that's always a great one. Many things. You get honey, you get pollinators for your garden. And what else we got on here? 
food preserving, baking, cooking. Uh, there's a great channel, uh, Townsend's, T-O-W-N-S-E-N-D-S. And they actually live like the 18th century, not 24-7, but they sell the clothing, the supplies, the cookware, and they actually demo making the tools and cooking on that channel. Dollar store for standard lids. Dirt cheap. Oh. I'm going to have to look. I don't remember seeing lids there. I know every store is different. But hey, if you can score lids at the dollar store, that's amazing. Yeah, if you can find them, stock up. <laughs> yeah, Townsend's is another channel on YouTube. You guys can watch. Yeah, good cast iron cookware. Absolutely. And a Dutch oven. You can make bread in there. Um, you can also grill uh, pizzas in the grill. We did that during the uh, power outage. But yeah, great cast iron cookware. Yeah, just keep it clean and seasoned. You're good to go. Absolutely. In a Dutch oven, you can hang over a fire. You can make soups in there. You can cook in there. You can make bread in there. And again, practice trial and error. That's something we're going to do over the winter. I want to try winter camping, uh, working with the stove, actually making bread in there. We're going to make an earthen oven. I'm super excited about doing this. We already got the wood supplies for it. And I just have to source clay and sand. Basically, what you do is you take, you build however you want to store the earthen oven. We're going to make a wooden stand for it. You get your bricks. We're going to lay out fire rated bricks and then you draw it out. Basically, it's clay and sand, a layer of that over a mold. And then the cob layer goes over that. So it's three inches of clay and sand and then three inches of cob over that. You do have to put a cover over it, a wooden like A-frame or something, just so it doesn't break down. But yeah, we're super excited about trying that. Don't buy that crap from Walmart or stores like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, don't. Go to like a Cabela's or Bass Pro or whatever stores are near you. Um, I don't know the ones up Midwest, but yeah, feed stores might have them. Yeah, go to a place reputable. We actually know what they're selling and it's not uh, made cheaply. But then that's another thing. Uh, inventory and supplies. Remember back uh, when uh, everything kicked off in February and March and ports were closed, uh, there was a video of a truck driver who normally moves uh, containers, shipping containers from ports to wherever it is in uh, middle America. And they were flabbergasted about how limited and little containers there were available to move and ship. So, and that all has a trickle down effect. Over time, you do have warehouses full of stuff, but over time that gets pulled from and pulled from. And when those warehouses are empty and then the stores are last, it's kind of hard to replenish that when all those ports are closed and then slowly things get back online, but that has that gap there that you have to start filling over time. So before the holidays happen, Thanksgiving and Christmas, get those supplies now. Again, before people start stocking up for winter or storms, you know, milk braid eggs. Again, before, while it's still kind of nice out and before things get really cold and crappy, stock up on the, the basics and essentials and anything else you could think of. Again, every family situation is different. It could be just one person or it can be a big family. You may have people come over that are in need of help. So kind of plan a little extra for that as well. But more skills, um, falling trees, um, yeah, that's not my forte. I could split the wood. Hey, hey, Tori, how are you? Just got home. Cool. Learn how to sun dry food. Yeah, we have a solar oven. Have not tried it yet, but that's something we do. Well, it's kind of late now. It's winter almost. But yeah, if you have a solar oven or if you get your hands on one or even build your own. Yeah, if, let me answer the emails after the show. But I do appreciate the information coming in. But yeah, a solar oven. That's another great thing to have. Uh, I want to put that under the list of things to get. And you can make them too. It gets, it's almost like um, those cold frames for winter, uh, for gardens. Yeah, Tori, I'm going to have everything on here later. And with the list, you can make one easy and cheap. Yeah, absolutely. A uh, plexiglass or glass and then a wood frame. It's kind of like almost like the cold frames for gardens. If you want to extend... Uh, some grow season for some plants. Yeah, totally. All right, what else we got on here? Canning supplies talked about. Cookware. Have extra supplies on hand. 
Um, again, with the skills, with the medical training, medical supplies, there was something I saw. Um, I've looked into learning how to apply stitches in case there's a big wound. If you look online, there's actually these special string and tape. They almost look like band-aids, but you pull and stretch over and it snaps back. So you can actually snap close a wound really tight. Like there's really good stickers with like string in the middle. You can make one. Yep. Again, it's just getting creative, kind of jumping down that creative black hole and seeing what you guys find, especially with products, little things that can make a big difference. And those in particular, the uh, the outside uh, stitches without actually going through the skin to keep the wound closed, I think it was like 10, 15 bucks for like six. Uh, cookware, security, medical supplies, uh, firearm training. I'm trying to think, what else did we skip? Um, security, firearm training. That's a personal preference. Super glue for cuts. Yeah, super glue for cuts that are small but deep. Is it true that super glue was made for the army or from the army to deal with cuts like that? I'm trying to remember. Someone mentioned that might have been the origin of how super glue came about. I don't know. I'm going to have to look that up later. I'll confirm that. But uh, firearms training, uh, that's a personal preference. Everyone's different. Everyone has their comfort levels with whatnot, but um, that's always an option. I think we covered everything on here, right? Even water from trees. <laughs> water sources, know where ponds, lakes, rivers are. Uh, we actually talked about this with someone else today. We talked about if there's a storm coming. The only thing we didn't do last time uh, was fill up our tub for extra water for toilets or any other means. That was the only thing we didn't do was fill up the uh, toilet we or the, the tub. It's right there next to the toilet. You can scoop that out, put it right in the tank. You're good to go. We do have the big blue squares. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's going to feel good. Quarter is the wound. <laughs> it's like, here, stay still. It's like, don't run, you're making a mess. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I think we covered all the basics and then some. Um, again, I'll leave the link uh, or the list down below in the description when this is over because we did add some stuff, which is great. I think we added hunting and processing, fishing, uh, the Brady Bunch for homeschooling, water from trees, getting a well pump for your well, and sewing. That was another one. Oh, yeah. Speaking of sewing, stock up on fabric and supplies, uh, thread. Needles, needles for your machine, um, fabric. Because again, in the future, um, it can be flannel. It can be anything from a shirt. I mean, if you're going to have time on your hands, you can get creative. Again, practice now. Know what you're good at. Um, darning. I got a, a sock darning uh, kit with a little mushroom. It's like a little wooden peg with like a little mushroom that you put in the sock and you can mend holes. And I got my daughter doing it. It was very therapeutic. You just sit there and relax and listen to a podcast, just fix a sock instead of just throwing them out. It's uh, sock darning. D-A-R-N-I-N-G. I'm going to put that down. Sock darning. You know, honestly, I think I got it for like 10 bucks online. Yeah, sock darning. Basics. And again... Get the stuff now and practice. Fabric is so expensive. Sheets are cheaper and you can get flannel sheets. Yes, flannel sheets. Good one. Absolutely. You can probably make pants out of them or make repairs with that. Absolutely. But get them A, while they're available and affordable. I say that all the time. I mean, you saw how crazy this, this things were this year with stores everywhere. Toilet paper. I couldn't believe that was the first thing to go. But then everyone started getting everything else. Um, again, before things get cold, before things start popping up like holidays or events, absolutely get those supplies now. Yeah, if you guys want to add anything else before uh, we button this up, I think I can't think of anything else to add to. We went through everything. Um, the old adage, three is two, two is one, one is none. Still no cleaning supplies in my area. Yeah, sanitizer, soap, all that stuff. Um... It's again, it's about getting creative where you find things like craft stores. You might find, or you know, someone mentioned Amish stores or those little Mennonite stores that may be off the beaten path and may have what everyone needs, but no one knows those stores exist or may not even realize that they sell that stuff there. 
again, it's being creative and sharing those little tidbits here and there online. Stereo strips, I'm a nurse. Yes! Oh, cool. I'm a, all right, stereo strips, I'm a nurse. Don't mess with sutures. Yeah, I've seen the kits online, the practice ones. Look, if you don't know what you're doing, you can make uh, stitches too tight and actually make it worse and make it rip. Hobby Lobby for lamp oil. Yes! That's something else we just talked about the other day with my husband. I said lamp oil. We went up to Kittery Trading Post up in Maine. So pretty. It's so beautiful up there. People are awesome. <laughs> Uh, we got lamps there. I think there are a Arabian or Aladdin that a lamp. I'm trying to remember the name, but they're beautiful. And we got wicks and lamp oil. It's like this bright white light that come from those beautiful lamps. But yeah. Hobby Lobby for lamp oil and wicks. Good one. Absolutely. Fingernail clippers and nail files. Yes. Again, this was little detailed stuff. Um, again, what was to come to supplies, Whatever you have, buy extras, floss, toothbrushes, toothpaste. You can buy toothpaste uh, tabs that are dry. You don't have to worry about anything drying out. But yeah, think about the basics, floss. Floss, you can use more than just, there are many uses to floss. Um, clothesline and clothespins. We made a, a makeshift clothesline, and we had to go out and buy clothespins during that week. We had no power. I have an Amish community in Kelowna, Kelowna, Iowa, you can buy, ah, oh, I think the closest one is like Western New York. That's a poke though. See, I'm re loading my bobs. Nice. Do you have a video in yours? Um, I, the only video I have for the bag is the initial one of me putting it together and explaining everything that's in there. Um, again, oh yeah. With the, the last video, getting ready for winter, I talked about replenishing or swapping out supplies for uh, your winterizing it. Basically, it would just be swapping out any foods that you may have in there, um, adding in hand warmers, same thing with your car, blankets, hand warmers, bottles of water, and food. Yeah, I mean, you can make it your own. There's no right or wrong way to do this. You, everyone's different. Everyone has their own preferences. It could be, again, just you, or it could be other people with you. So you might want to have multiples. Closest Amish to me is 3,000 miles. <laughs> Yeah, um, the closest one to me is in New York State. I'm not touching that one. <laughs> Crap, guys. I thought we were having fun in the state. Yeah. <laughs> no, put it this way. 10,000 address changes just from New York to Connecticut. It's crazy. I uh, used, to, used, used to live in Kelowna. Kelowna. I hope I'm saying that right. Is it Kelowna? Kelowna. They even have a attack in... Ooh. Okay. Yeah. See, I love those niche shops. Those are great. Yes. I just want to make sure I don't forget anything. Yeah. Again, um, I mean, it's not just my channel. You can look at others as well. Everyone has their own um, spin on how they want to pack it. Some people go really light. Some people just don't care. They actually have like the big straps, the buckle in the front. So you can take, you know, 70 pounds if you so chose to. Um, Kelowna. All right. <laughs> Me learning. Uh, emergency blankets, if it gets bad in there. Very lightweight. It'll keep you warm. So you don't have to have a literal blanket, like a big heavy one. You can have um, an emergency blanket, very lightweight, uh, easy to carry. You could throw a bunch of them in the car or one in your bag if you want. Um, you could pitch a tent with those. A-frame, easy peasy. Again, it, it depends on how creative you want to get with your supplies, how creative you are with your budget. Um, how many cool stores are near you? Again, utilize where you live and people around you. Um, I'm trying to think. Around here, uh, honestly, we'd have to do some driving north um, to get to some really cool niche stores. Again, just go online, get creative, look around you, see what the closest store is. Um, you may be surprised that there may be some near you. But again, training posts, stuff like that. Yeah, those are fun. Depends on, you know, where they shop, how they supply their stores with what. So again, look online, get creative, look at other channels. Whenever I find a really cool channel, I love plugging them. Like Townsend's, they actually live and make the tools and supplies. And then they share that with you. So look at them because they're going to save you time, money, and effort. Instead of trying to learn and see what works for you. You can just kind of bypass all that. Like um, our dehydrator, for example, never owned one before, never used one ago, uh, years ago. And I found one guy 
talking about uh, he had three models in front of him and we decided on the Excalibur because they had a fan in there. So from the top trade to the bottom, everything was going to get evenly uh, dried. Wool blankets in a vehicle. Yes. Wool is great. Or a cold weather sleeping bag, extra clothes just in case. Absolutely. Again, you can go as much or as little as you want. A lot of people like the minimalistic route. Um, if you want to go extra, have extra supplies. Absolutely. Um, again, you can go as big or as little as you want. Depends on your vehicle. Is it roomy enough to put extra supplies in there? Do you not have a lot of people sitting in there? You can put maybe a little a bin. You can label it and just shove it in there for the winter time. Yeah, again, you can customize this however you want. Um, the buggle bag I have, uh, it's kind of, I think it's about, I'm trying to remember the weight. It's 20 something pounds, but it's comfortable. We went for a hike uh, a couple of years ago now. It was uh, 3.2 miles round trip up a hill and then down. It was comfortable. In fact, on the way down, I was carrying her and her bag and she got tired. So I had her with her bag on her back. I'm hugging her in the front. I got my bag on me. <laughs> and I'm walking on the hill, just kind of leaning back. So altogether, uh, the last, I want to say, probably five, 600 yards. <laughs> I had a last minute uh, challenge. Living where it gets minus 30 or 40 degrees, have learned to carry stuff like this. Yeah, absolutely. Again, where do you live? Is it dry? Is it flat? Are you near a valley? Um, like being out in Iowa is relatively flat, maybe. I mean, sh I'm sure you have some hills. California, that's a unique animal right there, depending on where the winds are coming from, the humidity. Um, same thing here. Every place is unique. So just, again, look online, get creative, especially with people around the area where um, they're closest to you or maybe relatively similar to your environment, and get creative with your bags, your supplies, all that stuff. Hi, Homestead DIY with l &T. Hey, we just subscribed to your channel in Texas here. Oh, how's it going, Texas? I heard good things about your electric grid being hard, and that's awesome. Good for you guys. Anything below zero is not is not good to be trapped in. Yeah, no, seriously. Around me is hilly. Okay. Yeah, same here. We got... That's a tricky thing. Uh, two years ago, we had a, a tornado come through, and that was our first time experiencing a tornado. Um, I'm going to be honest, it sounded very cliche. It sounded like a train was coming through, sky was green, and we were hanging out in the basement on the phone with my husband for about 20 minutes. We're not seeing any comments. All right. Um, hopefully when, it, uh, when this closes, you can probably go back and check them out again. Or hit refresh, I don't know. YouTube's been special, <laughs> to say the least. This software actually picked up my, uh, allowed me to stream using them. I'm not on uh, Streamlabs this time, so welcome to the party. <sighs> Weird, yeah. Yeah, it's it's just, again, knowing your terrain, knowing your location, what works for you guys. Um, especially with the changes coming on, too. I talked to Dr. David Dilly twice about hurricanes and Grand Solar Minimum. Uh, talked to him the first time in June of 17 and again about three, four, six months. Uh, I'm trying to remember when I, I talked to him earlier this year. Great guy, very informative. His website is very detailed. He's been doing this for 40 years, I think, or more. Um, accurately predicting the um, hurricane season each year. He was only off by one year because he second guessed himself, but very accurate, very detailed, knows his history and data and science, really good stuff. And that's just one guy. There's so many great channels on here. Okay, sure, we could show that. Oh, I got emails and stuff popping through here. Um, yeah, okay. But yeah, you guys are sending great emails coming in. I'd love to check out these links and sites. Absolutely. But again, I'll leave all this stuff up again. And when it's done, I'm going to keep the list underneath in the description because we're actually added some great stuff in here in case you guys are coming in late. Um, today's theme was skills. Last week was getting your home and car ready for winter. But I'll run through it real quick. Skills, cert. Um, basically work with your local community in case it's an emergency. We have uh, ham radio communication. 
I want to share it online. Yeah, go ahead. That's great. I appreciate it. Um, like goes with your channel, um, Homestead DIY with l &T. So on the skills list, we got CERT, HEM radio, communication. That's a big one. Medical training, everything basic to EMT, to specialties. It's always great to have. Security for your home. Firearms training. We got gardening and herbs, food preserving. Uh, soap making, I put that on there. I don't do that, but if you do it, that's great. But more importantly, stock up on those supplies while you can. Baking, cooking, beekeeping, falling trees, homeschooling. And what we added was sewing skills, uh, hand and machine, hunting and processing, fishing. That's another big one. That's huge. That's a versatile one right there. Um, well pump. If you have your own well, get a well pump. It's so good to have. We have on there. All right. And water from trees. That was another one that Jeff shared. So can't think of anything else to add on here. I thought this was really informative, really good to have. You guys gave great ideas. Again, and then um, over here, old school tools, not electrical. If you can get the hand crank ones to drill holes and whatnot, and more importantly, the supplies, because a lot of things have been back ordered or hard to find or expensive. Uh, old school uh, tools, not electrical, and your supplies, nails, screws, hammers, screwdrivers, a lot of things by hand, preferably, and wood. Layers of security from, again, we talked about driveway sensors to the three-inch screws for your door jams, lighting around the home, cutting back the brush and whatnot from your windows. Uh, cameras, however you want to add to it. Uh, thorny prickly bushes around your property. Uh, canning supplies, that's a big one. We talked about how there's a shortage or really hard to find uh, pints and quart jars. The best I could find uh, locally were half pints for jam. But if you can, get the lids uh, regular and wide mouth because the jars you can use over and over again. But with the lids, always good to have extra lids. Uh, trade supplies, supplies that you want to trade for other supplies. Um, I think the best thing I've heard and learned was uh, work with other people's vices or things that they would need. That's always a good one. Let me see if I can uh, update this. Okay. And cookware, have extras. And more importantly, like it says right down here, buy now while available and affordable. That goes with everything. Any supplies you can think of that you use or just stock up on, get those. Yeah, sock darning, that was another one for skills and supplies. Repairing socks. And the biggest thing about all of this is getting your hands into this stuff, actually practicing. I just put a well, I just put in a well and hand dug also. Have driveway alarm and cameras. Yeah, absolutely. You can do hardwired cameras. You can do um, a wireless cameras. Or you can do both. Just have that multi-layer process. So if one goes out, boom, you're hardwired. You can get the generator going. You're good to go. Kind of helps you sleep better at night. <laughs> and um, I'm trying to think what else we got here. Yeah, that's basically covers a bunch of stuff. And again, even after the stream goes down, you can always add stuff down below in the comments. We have the habit of thinking of things two o'clock in the morning, like, oh, this would have been great for a skill or tools. But again, this is a good foundation to build upon. Again, everyone's different. Your circumstances are different. It could, again, it could be just you, yourself, or a big family, or you may have people coming towards you in case something does happen. Do you expect that? Do you, do you anticipate it? Um, again, it's just us, um, our family, but we do have friends Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. But again, uh, think about these things. Think about what you do on a daily basis. So supplies you want to get that are extra. You know, again, three is two, two is one, one is none. And again, just building that. Have a notebook. I carry these around everywhere. Solar radio. Absolutely. There's so many radio options. Um, both my husband and I are ham radio operators. Uh, we're EMTs, farm instructors, everything. Um, Again, it's, it's how creative you want to get with this stuff. And then just build on those layers. You don't have to just have one thing and stick with it. Look at multiple channels. Look at other people's uh, books and articles and podcasts. I uh, can't tell you how many projects we've been doing lately, work with other people, and I'll have in the background. So not only are they learning, but I can brush up on anything else. So good information. 
Again, if you have anything else you want to add to the list, drop it down below. Everyone has their own specialty and um, experience as to what works and whatnot. So, yeah, feel free to add that down below. Like welding. If you can weld, that's amazing. Communication device from Ham Radio, excellent. Maybe a satellite phone. On top of that, I would definitely um, get some EMP-proof bags and containers for your equipment. We do have small radios, like portables, and a big one. We do keep the big one covered unless you break it out and use it every now and then. But practice with the small ones. Um, if you're looking into communications, Ham Radio is it's a great community. Um, you find a club or an organization, very fortunate where we are in Connecticut, um, we have the, um, in Newington, ARRL. That's, that's number one. Um, in fact, the first time going on air was at like the mothership and you, you pull in, if you look it up online, there's antennas everywhere and you pull in, all you're looking at are just antenna driving in everywhere. It's amazing. A great community of people. So helpful and encouraging. You have any questions, there are so many people that will help you out with that. And once you get going, it's a lot of fun. The people you meet on the airwaves from different states, it's fun. You hear the accents, ask them how the weather's going. It is so much fun. Communication device. Yep, exactly. And then keep um, extras just in case anything happens. Um, you can build a nested Faraday cage where you get a galvanized. There's another one you put on there. A nested cage. There are hardened uh, Faraday cages and then there are nested ones. Nested are, you take a galvanized um, trash can, you can get at a feed store, whatever size you want. You line it with cardboard, same thing with the lid underneath. And you could take your cell phone, a radio, um, hard drive, whatever it is that, you know, electrically, electronically you want to protect. You wrap with some foil, I would say at least minimum three layers. You stuff it in there and you close it really good. It's not foolproof, but it will protect you at least, I don't know what the layers are. There are three layers to an EMP. There's E1, E2, and E3. Um, it's better than nothing. It's much better than putting stuff in a microwave from what I've seen online. You can put your device, electric device, in a microwave during an, an EMP. It'll protect it. Just don't turn it on. <laughs> yeah. Again, that's another one. In a, in a last-ditch effort, yeah, microwave. Or take the time to build a nested uh, cage. Again, every little bit adds up. It's better than nothing. Another tip I learned when it comes to hurricanes, people living in Florida, they take their um, valuables if they have to leave the house to put in the dishwasher. So if there is flooding, it's actually protected. I thought that was a genius idea. <laughs> so if you're prone to flooding for whatever reasons and you have a dishwasher and you have to leave the house, give it a shot. I've heard a lot of good uh, stories about that online. I found that fascinating. But yeah, nested uh, Faraday cage. Lots of videos online. Really easy. Just again, a Calvin, uh, galvanized trash can. You can get them at a feed store. I don't know where else you get them. Maybe. Oh, tractor supply. Definitely have those. Why well, I never thought about that. Again, it's you get down these you know rabbit holes of information and 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 books and podcasts that are out there. So many creative ways to get prepared. But yeah, galvanized. Um, Trash can, or even like the way people use them for feed bins for horses or animals. Line it with cardboard, wrap your device up at least three times with aluminum foil, and uh, give it a shot. You, we've tried it with radios. It doesn't work. We try it with cell phones. It doesn't come through. So, again, it, again, it's getting creative and not just resourceful, but actually trying these things out and seeing what works. Yeah, a lot of people... Um, I used to be in the same thing early, early on. We would just stock up on things and then never use it. But get out there and try it. Try creating a fire. Try seeing if you can save and protect your electronics. Go on the, you know, go on air and talk to people with, you know, your newly uh, ham license, your uh, technician license. There are great groups of people out there. Very encouraging, very motivating, um, informative. Prep, y'all can buy food, canned food, dehydrate food, please. It's going to get bad. Buy ammo if available. Honey, if you can get your hands on ammo, you're awesome. Working on skills now will help in the future. Yeah, if you're a nurse, you're going to be, oh, man, you're going to be a huge asset. Absolutely. 
yeah, if you have a dehydrator, keep it running. We just ran some peas yesterday. Um, if you can can food, can them. It's still good out there. Like we want to do some apple picking. We want to make apple butter, apple sauce, and some apple pies to freeze for later. Say, hey, you can go outside, have fun. This doesn't have to be daunting. This doesn't have to be stressful. A lot of people assume that getting ready is some like doom and gloom. No, it's actually fun. You're learning how to make fire. You're learning how to preserve food. You're learning how to communicate with other people in different states. It's fun. This can be a lot of fun, actually. It doesn't have to be all doom and gloom and sad. <laughs> and that's the downside of it. You have these shows that make it look like everyone's crazy. And it's like, hi, I like sunshine. <laughs> Yep. Again, work on those skills. This is, you know, you get to a point where you do things and you feel pretty good, but then it's like, okay, you got to help others. You don't just want to have this information and keep it to yourself. Yeah. Work on those skills. If you have them, or if you know other people who do have those skills, I want to try hunting. I will learn how to field dress animals in case anything God forbid happens you're not just ruining an animal. You know, you want to make sure that you're doing it right and you're getting the most out of it. And again, there's so many channels. I will find that deer channel. Um, let me put a note down. There's a guy down south who filmed another guy who just hunted a deer and dressed it in under 10 minutes and it was clean. I was impressed. And that's how you want to do it. You want to do it the right way. Fishing, hunting, gardening, all that stuff. Me and Teresa are fixing a giveaway an Excalibur dehydrator on our channel. Not creating, not giving a plug, just letting you know. Oh, yeah, no, that's great. Absolutely. If you guys want to, you want to have a dehydrator and you want to learn some more skills, go check out Homestead DIY with l and All right, so if that's Teresa, who's the L? <laughs> let me see. Let me put that down. Let me write down. How's the weather where you guys are? Homestead DIY in Texas. Lesson Teresa. Nice to meet you, Lesson Teresa. Good for you guys. Yeah, Excaliburs are great. How's Reagan? Oh, like Mr. Reagan? That's a great channel. Good information. Um, again, he lives out. I think he lives, still lives out in California. As, again, it's good, it's good to get that perspective. Holy moly. Yeah, Excalibur dehydrators are great. I saw a video years ago when I was looking to get a dehydrator. And I fell in love with that one only because it had nine trays. So you're getting a lot done. And it has that fan. So you're getting even heat distribution, even uh, air movement, all that good stuff. So, yeah. Good choice with Excalibur. I love that thing. That thing is solid. Almost uh, looked at the Harvest Right. The only reason w uh, what turned me off was some of the reviews. A lot of people said it takes a lot of power and it takes a long time, 24 to 40 hours, depending on what you're trying to freeze dry and not a lot of space, not a lot of shelves. So unfortunately, you have to like shove that in like a garage and keep it going all the time. No Reagan from Louisiana. Okay. Uh, it's still hot here. 101 yesterday, but we have a cold front. Reagan is great. He's in Louisiana. We're having lunch with them tomorrow. Okay. All right. It's you two talking. All right. Cool. All right. Well, hey, let uh, Reagan know. I don't know who he is, but uh, there's another storm that was just, we talked about it yesterday. I saw it on windy.com. That's a great website for all different layers of uh, weather. There's another storm. Uh, right along the coast, southern, southern, um, it's right in the Gulf of Mexico. It's going to ride along the Gulf, all along the coast of Mexico, Texas. Again, the same path as uh, the last two hurricanes. So yeah, definitely uh, bookmark windy.com and heads up with that one. That's going to be another slow moving storm, by the way. Happy birthday, Reagan. I don't know who you are, but happy birthday. I hope it's a good one. <laughs> I know, right? Happy birthday! <laughs> okay, sing me a song? No, not yet. <laughs> oh, you want to sing happy birthday? Oh, yeah. All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Reagan? 
That was to Reagan from Eva with love. Nicest guy. You know, again, if you got those great guys, you know, yeah. Southern boy prepper. All right, I'm going to check that one out too. I love this. All right. Yeah, if you can get those good guys in, you know, your circle, keep them there. That's amazing. Awesome. All right, you know, I think we're going to wrap it up. I can't possibly think of anything else to add to this right now. Yeah, damn sure. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. He's okay though, right? Are you guys going to go down and help out or just uh, yeah, damage from Laura? Yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of storms out there. And unfortunately, this next one, okay. Yes, he did. He's doing fine. Okay. Hey, you know, with friends like you, I think he's going to do well. Good and you guys for helping out and sticking together. That's really great. That's good stuff. Okay, no, go that way for that one. <laughs> all right. Um, like I said, um, I'll leave all the stuff below. I'll add to it. Um, thanks again for joining in. I really appreciate the feedback. This is great stuff. This is the whole reason why I wanted to do this. Very happy to plug any channels, any great information. Again, leave it down below. Not a problem. This is what we're doing this for. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. We'll do this. We'll keep doing this every Friday. And remember, if you want to watch some funny chicken action, you can go on D Live under Talk with Tiffany and check out our chickens. We just let them out today. They're doing great. Thanks for stopping by, you guys. It's really good to meet you guys. Les and Teresa, Tori, and Jeff. You guys are great. Solid people. Again, it's great to have you guys on here sharing this information. Big help. And again, stay on top of this. Are oh, you too, Tori? <laughs> Aren't they great? I love chickens. It's very through you just watching them walk around. <laughs> but again, we'll do this all again next Friday. I don't have a theme right now. We'll, we'll come up with that one. But again, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. And it, we'll get better at it each week with lighting. But again, uh, probably the biggest takeaway is just get your hands dirty, get, ex you know, get, you know, ex get exposed to everything that you have. Keep learning, keep growing, keep trying, work out all the troubleshooting now. That's probably the best thing. And um, get things now while you can, while they're available and affordable. That's probably the biggest thing. Yeah. All right. I want you guys to be well. Have a great weekend. Be safe and blessed. And again, thanks to guys for uh, stopping by. This has been great. You want to say bye? Yeah. Come on over. Say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs> I right, was say goodnight, everybody. Goodnight.